Hello and welcome to episode 2 of Merciful's Jurassic Park Pinball Adventure. Now I think I'm going to have to come up with a better name, uh, maybe an acronym, what's it, MJPPA? Welcome to Umjapa! <laughs> Today I'm dressed in cosplay, so I'm not actually going to do any work. I'm just going to do a, a tour of the machine, I'm going to take you around, I'm going to show you some of the stuff that I've already done, some of the upgrades I've got planned, some of the modifications, and some of the work that needs doing. So I purchased this machine a couple of weeks ago now, and it originally came from Italy, although I got it from a guy in South Wales. Now, he'd done a lot of work uh, on the circuit boards to get this back working. This, this was not in working condition when he got hold of it. Um, but the play field needs a lot of work, cabinet needs a lot of work, um, and it just needs kind of modernising, I suppose. It's 25 years old, this machine. So I've already tried to clean this. Um, I have given it um, an initial clean, I suppose, um, but it does need a much deeper clean with some, some foam uh, cleaner, um, some wax or whatever. So um, I'll do that at some point, but I want to give you um, a tour of the machine. As I said, I'm going to start from the top and, and kind of work down and show you everything that I've done so far. There was a lot of dust, dirt and soot both on the playfield and also inside the cabinet. I've got a feeling that it probably didn't have top glass for a while and there's a little bit of corrosion on the metalwork on some of the ramps and stuff, but uh, this, this can be sorted. The cabinet also has some damage consistent with a machine that was probably in an arcade or bar for a long time and you can see that it's been moved around a bit. It certainly smelt like a bar as well. Now I went through this in episode 1, but all the lamps in the back box were swapped out for warm white LEDs from Pinball Centre. This should keep the temperature down, extend the life of the circuitry, and also be cheaper on the electric bill. Pretty much all the playfield LEDs have been replaced by NoFlix Plus LEDs from Pinball Centre. Now these have all been colour matched depending on the colour of the insert. And I varied the LEDs between cold white, warm white, yellow and orange in a few places around the CRTs so that each one looks slightly different. The captive ball, which was originally just a regular chrome steel ball, has been swapped out for a pearly white ceramic one to represent the dinosaur egg. Now this type of white ball is standard on other games such as Twilight Zone and Avatar, but I think it looks pretty good in Jurassic Park. Now I fixed a switch here in the control room. It wasn't triggering each time and I discovered that one of the diodes had broken off the solder. It was still touching, which is why it worked some of the time, but I guess the ball landed hard and the vibration moved it slightly or something made a gap and wasn't registering each time. I've got some additional toys in here as well. The scale Jeep Wrangler is currently sitting over the shooter lane. I've got another Pterodactyl which is the same design as the one that was originally in here. Blue the Velociraptor is stood by the Raptor kickback over here and I think she's a pretty good scale for the T-Rex. I've already begun installing some fresh rubbers onto this machine from Titan Pinball. Now I've mostly gone for transparent and blue silicone but up here by the gate we've got a nice orange instead. Some fresh flipper buttons replaced the grimy 25 year old ones that were on it when I got it. Some plastic yellow leg protectors now sit behind the black legs, which probably by the way also need paint stripping and powder coating. But I think this gives it a bit of visual definition while also reducing the chances of any further damage to the cabinet. Black bolts nicely colour match with the legs as well. A new £1 coin mechanism has been installed in one of the slots. Now part of the fun about restoring this machine is getting that genuine arcade experience and that does mean having to feed it coins. £1 currently gives 3 credits. So the LEDs that I've got in this machine now under the playfield, they look pretty stunning, especially in this kind of half light that we're filming in now. Um, but I haven't finished, the general illumination still hasn't been done. Um, so there are, um, underneath the pop bumpers there are LEDs, kind of the flickering ones, strobing ones that you see in the first uh, episode that I did. Um, and also some original incandescent bulbs here in the background as well. So I'll be placing a new order with Pinball Centre soon and I'd love to know your thoughts on whether you prefer warm white or cool white. So I've got a mixture of cool white and warm white at the moment, but I really ought to make a decision on what I'm going to do. I've got an issue with the power shed where it doesn't register each time. That's because the switch in the subway doesn't always depress fully when the ball goes over it. Now I've already bent the wire a few times and it works for a while, but it does seem to go back to the old shape after a few runs over. I'll probably need to take off the subway completely, move the switch slightly or something, and then see if I can improve it that way. Because at the moment, chaos mode is very difficult, albeit not impossible, to achieve. As I said earlier, the cabinet itself does need some work. There's a lot of bumps, scrapes, dents and chips, particularly around the back and underneath, which you can't really see. It needs some good quality filler and wood glue with some black satin gloss to blend it in. 
Now I still need to finish installing these new competition silicon rings from Titan Pinball. I don't really want to keep taking apart the playfield over again, so I'm waiting for some more LEDs to arrive from Germany for the general illumination and I'll do it all at the same time. Some of the transparent star posts are looking a little bit sad. They're dirty, which I suppose could be sorted, but they're also cracking in a few places as well. At some point I'll put some fresh ones in there. The stand-up targets in the centre of the playfield need fixing. This single one just needs tightening underneath the playfield, but these three are a little bent out of alignment and I might have to take the whole unit out, sort it and then re-solder it back into place. In the comments of my Backbox LED video, someone mentioned that there was no knocker when I was awarded the free game. That's something I still need to investigate. There's some quite obvious hole damage around the bunker, control room and power shed. I'll be using some resin wood filler to restore some of this and then some acrylic gloss paint over the top. Now I'll also be installing some metal hole protectors to stop it from happening again. Lastly I've got a couple of other dinosaur toys from the same range as the Velociraptor that are a nice scale match. Gallimimus which is probably going to sit towards the back by the boat dock and Dilophosaurus which might go on the right side of the plastic. So as well as all of that there's what I consider big upgrades still to come. This includes the installation of a Pinsound Plus board and headphone station, although I'll be using the existing speakers for a little while. I've already tried a few things to get rid of the dreaded Data East hum, but it's still there. You didn't really notice it during play, but it's definitely there in a track mode. The microphone on the camera does pick it up. I'm not sure if upgrading to Pinsound will remove this hum entirely, but it also gives some additional benefits, even if it doesn't. I'll do a whole video on that at some point in the future. And a colour DMD. The intro animation to this video series is of a colour DMD screen. Now I've currently got an original plasma DMD display which is sadly starting to fail and you can see sometimes there's a line or two out on the display. Now I do have some conductive epoxy which I might use to repair it but ultimately it's something we all need replacing anyway. So why not upgrade to colour? Jurassic Park is one of the machines that's been fully colourised as opposed to just cycling through its single colours. There'll be a whole video on that as well. So I think I've covered everything I wanted to talk about in today's episode. Um, more videos will be coming soon, so please do remember to uh, like, uh, subscribe and comment on, uh, on any thoughts that you've got. But maybe, maybe you want to hear about something next, maybe you want to see something, maybe some gameplay or something. Do let me know in the comments. Um, until next time though, bye bye!